So uh, Joanne Jeffries is the author of Have You Seen Tucker? Uh, Joanne was born in Roswell, New Mexico. Joanne grew up in a military family. It was on a brief layover in Hawaii on her way to Japan that she fell in love with Hawaii. Years later, she found her way back. She married, became a nurse, and worked in the neonatal unit at Kapolone, is that right? Kapolone Medical Center as a coach and referee for the American Youth Soccer Association. She enjoyed helping children develop positively and gain confidence in themselves. Joanne has taken Hawaiian, Hawaiian language and culture classes and volunteering at the local Hunana Leo Preschool, helps her further her learning of Hawaiian. Her writing focuses on events in Hawaii as well as other stories that have ties to Hawaii. She cur currently. Well, thank you for that introduction, Stacy. I appreciate that. Although now I currently reside in Idaho and I wrote, have you seen Tucker while living in Idaho? I had a, a pretty big uh, tuxedo type cat that went missing one weekend and we, um, looked and looked and looked, and I was so sad about this book about the cat being missing, so I wrote a little something about it, and it turned into this book. So I'll start reading. Mary loves to play with her cat, Tucker, but sometimes he goes exploring and gets into trouble. He has a handsome black and white coat that is always easy to spot, but today he's nowhere to be found. Grandma, have you seen Tucker? No, I don't know where he is. Maybe he's outside. Let me get these pages turned. Mary went into the yard and looked high and low. He wasn't there, but there were some birds at the bird feeder. Hello, birds, have you seen Tucker? No, said the birds, busily eating. Maybe he is in the tree. I'd like you to see this artwork. It's really pretty. The, the illustrator did a great job. Mary went over to the tree and began to climb the branches. She didn't find her cat, but she did see a small squirrel skittering up the bark. Hello, squirrel. Have you seen Tucker? No, said the squirrel, twitching its tail. Maybe he's in the meadow. Mary climbed over the fence, traipsed through the, the grass in the little meadow. She didn't see Tucker, but there was a deer doing a little grazing. Hello, deer, have you seen Tucker? No, said the deer, raising its head to look around. Maybe he's in the woods. Mary walked into the woods and peered around. There weren't any cats hiding there, but she came across a handsome pheasant foraging for berries. Hello, pheasant. Have you seen Tucker? No, said the pheasant indignantly. Maybe he's on the hill. Mary left the woods and hiked up the hill. Tucker wasn't there either, but she spied a marmot on a mound of dirt. Hello, marmot. Have you seen Tucker? No, said the marmot, digging a burrow. Maybe he's under the bushes. Mary crawled under the bushes, but there was no sign of her lost cat. She found instead a family of chuckers chattering noisily to each other. Hello, chuckers. Have you seen Tucker? No, said the chuckers running around. We're afraid of him. Maybe he's in the garden. Mary was getting tired and worried that she would never find Tucker. In the garden, she searched up and down the rows of plants, but all she saw was a mouse munching on some leaves. Hello, mouse, she said sadly. Have you seen Tucker? No, said the mouse with his mouth full. Maybe he's in the house. Oops, excuse me. But that's where I started, Mary said with a sigh. 
She had asked the birds, a squirrel, a deer, a pheasant, a marmot, some chuckers, and a mouse. All of them were outside, but Tucker was not. Oh, well, maybe the mouse is right. I'll look inside again. Mary went inside looking a little worse for wear, and there was her cat sleeping on the rug. There you are, Tucker, Mary shouted with joy as she swooped him up into a hug. Now we can play. That's the end of the book and the story. In the last couple of pages of the book, I've also written a page with just a few suggestions on how to find your lost cat and a few suggestions on how to be a responsible pet owner. Um, I thought it would be helpful to put that in so the parents can talk to their children about cats and how to take care of them and what, to, what simple things can be done in order to find them. And I also had an endorsement from the Ontario Feral Cat Group which is located in Ontario, Oregon, and they wrote a nice um, piece about the book at the end. And I worked with them for a few years, but that's the story of, have you seen Tucker? So are there any questions? Um, let me check the questions box here. I um, wanted to, when you wrote the book, what was the, um, you know, what was the desire? Is the desire for school children or for parents? I mean, how did you have plans for the book or just wanted to share the story? Actually, I just wanted to share the story because I really missed that cat. It was interesting. The cat appeared at our house one day, just jumped right out of all of our day lilies in the front and stayed with us for a couple of years before he went missing. He was a pretty big cat and he was a real friendly cat. And when he left and we couldn't find him, I just thought I'll write this down and see where it goes and held on to it for a couple of years. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I think a lot of organizations, well, before COVID um, and maybe something like this, a lot of organizations do Zoom type calls with their volunteers and with children's groups. Um, maybe this would be something that they would wanna use for that. It may be. I've worked with the Ontario Feral Cat people for a number of years when we lived in Idaho prior to us moving back to Hawaii. Uh, we've just been back now for a little over a year. And it was a good group, um, really liked what they were doing and how they were doing things. It's totally nonprofit, as many, many of these organizations are. So it was it was good working with them, yeah. Uh, here's a question for you. Was Tucker an indoor only cat? Um, was one of the, um, let me see, was one of the end notes you made to keep all friendly cats inside only? I'm uh, trying that no, out. yeah. Tucker was not an indoor cat at all. He was actually, he lived in our garage. We had two indoor cats and um, couldn't really mix the two. And so we had a little cat door that he could come in and out and go because he was, he just wasn't suitable for in total indoor as far as where we lived and how he had lived before. So, and, but I do think that uh, most pets, if you're going to have pet cats, they might want to keep them inside more than, than outside, especially in areas where we live like it, like we did in, in Payette where a lot of, there's a lot of wildlife out there that um, might be harmful to cats, so. Her in real life after you went missing? Pardon me? Did you find Tucker in real life after he went missing? No, we never did find him. We have some suspicions, but <laughs> no, yeah. And that was the sad um, part, so, but I didn't put that in the book. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody, you know, asks, asks lots of questions here. Yeah. Um, all right, well, it looks like I've covered, we've covered all the questions. So um, thank you again. The, actually, I shouldn't say that. There are some other comments in here. Um, there are some folks that are interested in 
uh, purchasing the book as a gift uh, for friends as well as for themselves. So they'll be going to actually purchase um, and um, found the presentation wonderful. So it's the really nice comments in here. So we'll make sure we get those passed along to you, Joanne, too. I appreciate it. And thank you for the opportunity.